right, on today's video, we've got an unboxing, and we have got a couple boxes here from Anderson Manufacturing. Let me get this stuff out of the box, and I'll show you what we got. All right, this is the first box, and we have got a slide in this box, and in this box, we have got a frame, and we've got a sticker from... Anderson. This is what we got from Anderson. We've got the Kiger 9C Pro and this is a Glock 19 clone, basically a Gen 3 clone. And let me explain to you why I got this. So Labor Day, Anderson had a huge sale on their site. Everything on the site was 30% off. Now we can't talk about prices on here, but the reason this came in two separate boxes was because if I bought the slide and the frame separate, I saved even more money. And for the price that I picked this up for, I couldn't pass it up. Now besides the price I got this for, there's a couple other reasons I went with this. One, my buddy Kyle works for Anderson Manufacturing. You see him on uh, Ghost Tacticals chat with me every Tuesday night. He's been on my show once or twice, and he's just a great guy, and Anderson's a great company. The other reason I went with this, say, over the PSA Dagger, is I just like the looks of the Kyger better than I do the Dagger. And let me grab something here, and I'll show you why. So this is my Strike 80 that I built. A few years ago and I love this frame now the Kiger and the strike 80 frame are a little small for my hand my pinky does sit right there on the frame because this is a Glock 19 size frame and so is this but one of the biggest reasons I went with the Kiger is one I love the slide cut on the top and the sides they've got the Kiger 9c Pro here on the side of the slide but these frames are very similar the way they look turn it around here and that was the biggest reason I wanted to get the Kiger over the dagger because I love this gun and I just need to find a magwell that fits this and then it will fit my hand really nice just like my strike 80 build so let's dive into this a little bit. This is an optics ready slide. It is RMR cut. So I'll be able to direct mount an optic right to this slide, which is awesome. It does have pretty tall suppressor height sights on it. So once we get an optic down in there, we should be able to co-witness. Now I'm not a real big fan of the sights, just due to the fact that they are completely blacked out. But one thing I will say that I like better about this Versus, say, the ones that came on my Taurus G3 Tactical or my new Beretta APX A1 is their front sight is not as thick as the sights on those two. So it will be a little bit easier to use these, but we can always just put a little bit of white paint or something here on the front if we have to. Now the frame, I love this frame. We've got really nice stippling right here. And uh, got a nice shelf right there to put your thumb, which is super cool. It's not a left-hand friendly gun, obviously. None of the Gen 3s are. But I've got a lot of Glocks and Glock clones, and I've just learned to get used to it. Yeah, it's got really nice stippling here and here. All right, due to YouTube rules, I didn't want to take the slide off the frame on camera. But uh, I'll give you guys a look here bottom of the slide get you in here on the cuts I like this and we're gonna pull this barrel out because this barrel is really nice too that comes in this there's your other side top all right here's the inside of the frame looks just like any other Glock 19 or clone everything has a really nice polishing on it though here from what I can see and we'll get this back together and we'll test the trigger too before the end of the video. 
All right, let's talk about this barrel. This barrel is just awesome looking. It is a fluted barrel. It does have a recessed crown. The barrel also has a 1 in 10 twist rate on it. Really nice design here in the top and on the side. Really like this barrel. Now this barrel is DLC coated and it is a 3.91 inch barrel. Our slide, this is a billet slide. It's got a little bit of weight to it and this is manufactured out of 416 stainless steel. All right, we got it back together. So let's talk about the trigger. Now it feels like a Glock trigger. I don't care what aftermarket triggers you put in these. Yes, there's triggers out there that are a lot better than what the factory Glock triggers are. But to me, they always end up feeling like a Glock trigger, no matter any way you look at it, with the exception of maybe the Timney. The Timney is a good feeling trigger, but I'm not a real big fan of it because I've had some issues with friends' guns that I've put them in. So, but anyway, here's your take up. And a really nice, clean break. And to be honest with you, I'm probably going to leave the trigger alone in this. So let me show you the reset. Right there. And a real nice break. Doesn't have that spongy feel of a factory Glock trigger. But nice short reset and a nice clean break. Let's get the trigger pull gauge and test this trigger weight. All right, I got the Wheeler trigger pull scale. Let's get a couple trigger pulls on this. Get it here in the sweet spot. All right, we broke right at about six pounds. A hard time believing that trigger is a six pound trigger. It does not feel like it. I like the trigger. But, uh, let's, let's try it about right here. All right, that time we broke a little over six and a half. So let's do one more. I'll try to get it down here a little lower on here. Right there, we're at about five and three quarter. So let's just go and say it's got a six pound trigger. Like I said, I uh, doesn't feel that heavy at all, but I like the brake and the reset on it. I don't really think I'm going to do anything with the trigger in this, to be honest with you. Now let's talk about the undercut on the frame. This has got a really nice undercut right here. Got some checkering, stippling, whatever you want to call it here on the bottom. And you got it here on the front. All right, up here in the front, we got a really nice rail here. Due to the size, probably the Phoenix GL06 that I like to use would be a perfect fit on this. Or the Streamlight TLR7. One of the more smaller compact lights, or even like the O light, uh, Boulder Mini, I do believe it is, would probably look pretty good on here. I did forget to show you too here at the bottom. Do have the Anderson logo in the frame on both sides, which is really nice. Your uh, mag release is a little bit extended. Slide release, if you're right handed. No problem getting to that at all. So all the controls on this are extended controls, which is really nice. Even your takedown here. With as deep as they cut in this shelf here for your thumb, you're not going to have any problems grabbing the takedown lever to get the slide off. This is a really, really nice gun. And for the money that I paid for it, you can't beat it. Now we're going to be doing a ton of videos on this. I've got a comp for it. We're going to be putting an optic on it. i got some more optics on the way from Gideon that we haven't tested on the channel. i got one that I'm really excited to test out on this. We will take it to the range and shoot it with just iron sights for like a first impressions video. And uh, 
try to find a mag weld for this and other than that I think this is going to be a fun gun for the channel well I hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one